and AIA Australia, helping your clients in their time of need is our number one priority. In 2016, we paid over $1.15 billion in claims to both retail and group members. That's over $4.5 million every working day. To offer your clients cover you can trust, chat to your AIA CDM today. We are live, ready to, for people to join in. I can see some people rolling in as we speak. So today we're super excited. We've got MJ Big Dog, um, <laughs> who I've affectionately called the Big Dog because he doesn't have a title. Um, so we'll just wait a little while while people filter in. How's your week been, Paddy? It's been pretty exciting. It's a bit. I didn't realise it was Thursday because we had the short start to the week. So it's. Um, I'm going to get to the week and I'm going to have a lot not done, but um, that's okay. <laughs> Mate, the issue, the issue with, so I work four days a week. The issue with working four days a week is when I get a long weekend, it's just it's just a normal weekend for me. So <laughs> it's always a short week for me. <laughs> well, I, I aspire to that, Phil. I've got a bit, a bit of work to do. Mate, you can, you can do it. You just, you just want to keep busy. That's the issue. Uh, MJ, how's your week been? Hey, fantastic. Um, I'm actually being taken away by my partner this afternoon for, for two days. I have no idea where, where I'm going or what we're doing. I've just been told to pack stuff and she's coming to pick me up at two o'clock. So week's been so, awesome, but just very confused about what's to happen over the weekend. I've, um, I've had three different conversations with three different people about them either getting engaged, um, buying rings, or uh, two people got engaged and one person bought a ring. So... Wow, maybe maybe yeah. she's proposing to me. There you go. It's in the air, MJ, so we'll <laughs> see. <laughs> All right, let's get started. Before we start, I just want to give a massive plug to the Brisbane XY live event that's happening. It's going to be um, a great event. Paddy, give us a bit of a rundown of what's going on. Yeah, we're, we're, we sort of sat down with a few of the guys in Brisbane and we decided that we wanted to talk about what, um, what creates outcomes with clients um, and is it more about changing behavior or um, just achieving an outcome and unpacking that a bit. Uh, we've got Cara Brett there. We're also going to have Bernie Ripple, uh, ex XMP, um, which will make things a bit spicier. And uh, there, there will also be um, one or two other ad advisor panelists on there. So just unpacking the issues and um, yeah, looking to be an engaging session with lots of discussion and um, audience participation. So. Starting. Great, it's going to be a good session. I know Paddy's flying up for it, um, so make sure you book your tickets. Um, we have officially hit over 600 people in the Facebook group, so um, super exciting. It's been blowing up the Facebook group, 100 people in the last week pretty much. Um, so if you're not in there, um, make, sure, make sure you get in there. If you know any advisors who are not in there, make sure you send them an email um, with a link that uh, Jackie just put in the comment section or in the, in the chat area. So make sure you get in there and get everyone you know to join up. Uh, the other thing, just on Zoom, just housekeeping, click on the chat button and make sure you're asking questions. We want this to be as interactive as possible. So today we've got MJ Big Dog um, and we are talking about uh, the client experience. So cutting out the bull crap um, from your business and focus on the areas that truly add value. So, MJ, introduce yourself. What do you do? Who are you? Well, hey, everyone. Firstly, thank you for having me. Um, and just to reiterate what Phil just said, if any of you want to ask questions or try and get the most value out of me possible, please just write what you're challenged by or what you're struggling with in your business, and we can riff off those and actually work with you one-on-one. -on -one. But uh, I do a couple of things with my time, but I basically teach emotional intelligence for a living. I teach people how to communicate. I teach people self-awareness. I teach people resilience. Um, I work with schools. I work with colleges, I work with universities, and I work with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis from property developers making you know, businesses I reckon would be worth a couple hundred million dollars right through to people who are currently unemployed and looking for a job. And I seem to be really good at helping people think through problems and looking at it a different way. And so, yeah, that's, that's, that's my spiel. Awesome. So, you know, what are, the, what are the things that truly, in your opinion, what are the things that truly add value to our clients? And what are we doing wrong, I guess, is more, more the point. All right. So um, 
I won't answer your first question because it's just to add value, which isn't helpful at all. But the second question, what are people doing wrong? You're trying to decide what is valuable rather than actually seeing what your client thinks is valuable, right? Like you can build the best 10 minute Facebook video in the world talking about the most amazing compliance or technical information or talking about different super funds. But if your clients don't care, then it doesn't matter, right? Like Gary Vaynerchuk, who's a great mentor of mine, says the market is the market is the market. It doesn't matter what you think value means. It only ever matters what you think your client, or what your client actually thinks is value. So if you take a big step back and you don't try and give value just so you can take something, right? You don't put up a Facebook video just so you can ask people for their email at the end, but you're actually just trying to give value to create a relationship and you try and give value to the client rather than giving what you think is valuable, then amazing things will start happening. And again, it's just a patience game, right? Like, you know, when I started my business about 12, 13 months ago, it was really hard for me to give people things for free when I was only making 250 bucks an hour, right? It was really hard not to charge for people when I promised I'd do it for free when I wasn't making enough money to pay for my rent. But I trusted the strategy and I had patience and I kept trying to focus on what they want rather than myself. And amazing things started happening. So I've worked with a fair few financial planners by this um, stage. And I think there's a couple of things which come up, which I think people are really struggling with. And one of them is just not talking about financial planning in the way you want to talk about it, but talking about it for your clients and making it about them rather than about yourself. Yeah, cool. So I'm the best thing about doing these interviews is I can um, pretty much get these um, people like yourself and do a one on one consultation. So um, make sure you're asking questions. But if you don't ask any questions, I'm going to be really selfish um, and use up all this time for myself. So my first point is you said uh, give value uh, to what they want um, and not what you think is valuable. So I do videos once a week, I put them out. I think I'm the best in the world. I think what I'm doing is amazing, um, but I'm always looking at uh, wanting to improve and I know that um, it isn't as good as what it could be. So just unpacking that statement about giving value on what they want, how do you decipher, you know, when, when I'm doing a video once a week, it's difficult to keep on, um, you know, thinking about the content that, that my clients or perspective clients uh, deem as valuable. How do you say, how do I decipher that between what they feel is valuable and what I think is, is adding value? Okay, so there's two ways to take this. One would be the technical route, like what's the quality of your camera? How are you releasing it on social media? Like all, all of those things, um, but that's not my area of expertise. In terms of the, the value exchange, just to be really clear here, are these people that you want to become your clients or are these people that are already your clients and you're just trying to add more value? Uh, both. Both. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, both. Right. Mostly is there not one, yeah, is there one more than the other? Like, do you, what's your outcome here? You just want to have your clients really happy or you actually want more clients? Uh, more clients, um, but, but really the main aim is I feel like uh, there, there's quite a low uh, understanding of um, and a low, low level of conversations around money. Um, so my big aim is to put out content to get people talking and thinking about their own, you know, their own finances. Um, sure. so, so this is the question I would have for you. Do people want to talk and think about their own finances? Um. Well, let me just press pause right there. This is exactly what I mean. Of course, of course, people should think and talk about their finances. Of course they should. Of course, people should be fit and go to the gym seven times a week. But human beings are lazy and they don't care and they want to throw money at problems so they don't have to worry about them. And so that's what I mean, right? Like, I think people should talk about their finances. I think people should be educated and so do you. But maybe people don't want to be. Maybe mm -hmm. people want to know that if they just give you X amount of dollars, you handle their finances. And so then you need to be talking about how much you can help them. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. But in, in a world where only, let's say we, we um, use the statistics of 20% of people only see an advisor in a world where we've got really low um, financial literacy, even though I hate the term, how yep. do we improve those stats? How do we, actually get people um, to think about their finances because I feel it is fundamentally one of the most important things that we should be doing um, yep. as financial advisors. Yeah. So I agree wholeheartedly, right? 
But if your clients don't care, like you're fighting a losing battle. Do you know what I mean? Like I agree with you wholeheartedly. People should be financially literate. A hundred percent of people should be seeing a financial planner. Everyone should be saving. Everyone should be careful about going into debt, getting credit cards. I, I completely agree. But if they don't care, then your message is going to fall on deaf ears. And so you can approach this in one of two ways. You can approach it and just focus on the people who do care, right? 20% of the population is a giant market size and make sure they know that you're the best in the business or the people who don't care about it. You have to try and figure out what their pain points are, right? They maybe don't care about finances, but maybe they're really annoyed that they have to keep, they can't get out of credit card debt, right? Maybe they don't care about their finances and don't know what a financial planner is, but they're annoyed that they can't afford to go on holidays. Right. And that would be your foot in the door, but you're choosing to fight an uphill battle. And I love the intention, but trying to communicate with people who don't care is going to be always very, very difficult. So yes, I think that we should be financially literate as a society, but if you wanted to approach it from that point of view, then I would just go in and start speaking to kids in schools about financial literacy because you'll actually be able to get through to them. This is turning yeah. into one of my favorite sessions. Um, let's grill Phil. <laughs> 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 even even the audience is getting into it. Um, Ray Ray wants you to show show your client persona, Phil, um, and be clear about that. <laughs> um, for, well, for me, um, yeah, I don't, I don't niche as well as I should. Um, my um, I want to niche more, and but my current client persona is um, young professionals between twenty five and forty five. So that's my current client persona so i guess i guess where where other than my videos are a waste of time for everyone mj thank you very much um outside of that how do i understand what what is valuable other than uh i guess yeah i'll i'll, I'll put the i'll put the question out okay. so um your client persona of 25 to 45 is a 25 year old who's probably just finished university and is now just in their corporate job are they thinking about the same things as a 45 year old who probably has one or two kids and has a mortgage? Definitely not. No. So what's a 25 year old thinking about? And, and this is the thing, a 25 year old who comes and sees a financial planner is clued in, right? They're probably a high achiever, right? They're probably already thinking about their career. They're probably maybe even already been promoted. They're probably working in a good grad job. They're probably making okay money. Right, And then a 45-year-old who's coming to see a financial planner, maybe they've been punched in the face by a mortgage. Maybe they've been shocked by how much it, default, it costs to have kids. Um, you know, so they're going to be thinking about completely different worlds. Does that make sense? Mm. And now that you can understand that, we can think, okay, well, what would be the most effective thing to help with young grads? Okay, 25 years old. Well, saving plans, you know, teaching them how to maximize their finances, making sure they're thinking about promotions, Right? That's how you'd speak to them. You'd be trying to give them value in how to move forward on what they want. And then the 45-year-olds, like, they want something completely different. They want to know how can I put a saving plan now to make sure I can afford college for my kids. And so there's also the people in the middle. There's the 32, 33, 34-year-olds who probably just started coming into some money. They've started making over 100K a year, and they want to know what to do with it. And so you start thinking about it like that, and you start to understand what these people want, and then you can give them value. Yeah, I guess I guess I'll push back on on your uh, examples. Are uh, you know all of your examples have been around around organising their finances, but previously previously you just said that no one gives a damn about sorting out their their own finances, and and so therefore, um, do we talk about money? Um, is is that when I do my video, should I talk about money or exclusively don't talk about money, but talk about their life stages? Yeah. So like, I'm only just using this as shorthand. I don't work in the financial planning industry so, and I actually have never seen a financial planner. So I, I don't know about the lingo, but that was the statement of people don't care about their finances is because you said, you know, 20% of people see a financial planner and 80% of people don't. So what I said is, you know, 80% of people clearly don't care. I think mm. that it's, I don't, I don't know enough about the market or the profession that you do to be sitting here trying to tell you what products or what services you should be talking about with people. That's tactic stuff. And that's not that I'm just not good at that. I'd have to work in your industry for five years to know what I was talking about. But in terms of the high end strategy, I think what I said really stands, right? Like if you talk to a 25 year old about the same stuff, you talk to a 45 year old, you're going to annoy both of them, right? My youngest client is 
19 and he basically just wants to figure out how to get the cute girls at his university class to pay attention to him. And my oldest client's 65 and she's divorced. She's got three kids and she's just come into a bit of money and she wants to live her life again. For me to sit down and talk to them about the same problems would just be ludicrous, right? I would annoy both of them. And so I'm very aware that when I'm around these people, I'm trying to go to them and listen to them and not try to bring them into my world, but actually go to them and understand their world. And that makes it much, much easier to understand and give value. Yeah, 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 I, t- yeah, I totally agree with you. Um, I think the, yeah, Patty, jump in any time, but I think for me, there's, there's a discussion great. around the marketing <laughs> piece where you're um, putting stuff out there and your, your one-on-one conversations with clients. So, um, you know, those examples of, you know, the 19-year-old, the 65-year-old, uh, those conversations you have with each individual client will be different. But, but I guess from my questioning was more around the, the marketing piece when you're, when you're putting content out there to try yeah. and add value. Do you think that content needs to be a lot more specific and just put content out there for the one, um, you know, 45-year-old who's dealing with kids? Yes, Absolutely. And again, you have, uh, look, I don't understand advertising funnels in this industry well enough to sit here and try and tell anyone how to do this. But with the way advertising works in today's world, you can absolutely just target 40 to 45 year olds. Hmm. Right? Now, does that mean that you put up one blog post a week? No, it just means instead of doing one video a week, you do three, right? You put one out on Monday, one out on Wednesday, one out on Friday. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. And one for the 45 year olds, you say this is for... I don't know, this is for kids who are at university or this is for parents who have just had kids. This is for kids just out of uni and you could just segment out your market and have three different areas. And then it's just, it's really gonna hit people because when someone's watching your marketing, you want them to say me too, rather than so what, right? When I see most marketing messages, my immediate, the immediate thing I say in my head is so what, right? Like I walk past a, you know, it happens when I walk past bus advertisements all the time and it's like, you know, show me a picture of Brad Pitt and his watch. And I'm like, so what? Right. But that's because I'm not in their target market. But then sometimes I walk past advertising. I'm like, holy shit, me too. Right. I identify with what they're saying because it feels like they're pointing to me. And that means I'm actually engaged with them. Now that you don't have to market that way, right? A lot of companies don't market that way and it's still very successful. But if you want to build a culture of raving fans, if you want to have a business where people refer like crazy, and people need to feel understood and appreciated and valued. And that starts from the second you start speaking to people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, I think, um, Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, man. Over to you, Patty. I thought I'd take the um, spotlight. I feel a little bit just for a sec, even though I'm enjoying it so much. Um, guys in the audience, just ask, ask your own problems. Let's not, um, like if you've got something that you've been struggling with, get it out there. It's, it's, um, it's okay to share. Let's, let's make the most of having MJ on. I'm going to lead with a bit of an example of what I'm looking at from a, um, I guess from a corporate, traditionally what's called a corporate super standpoint. MJ, we're looking at a, a general um, employer base of maybe 500 employees and an advisor comes in and they're the advisor that is, um, I guess, responsible for um, educating and dealing with uh, the, the broad employer base. So within that employer base, you've got a, quite a diverse bunch of people. And what, what's been, what I've been thinking of doing is going into picking about four, four niches and four personas and going really deep on those four personas. And that's sort of how I'm thinking of keeping a broad, broad approach. And this is because this is what a lot of advisors um, struggle with the, with the niching. It's, um, oh, I, I really wanted to do that one, but there's also these people I want to deal with as well. What's, what's your, what do you have to say about that? Oh, that, that sounds amazing. Um, that's actually, 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 as you were talking just then, I was thinking through and I was like, look, of these 500 people, if you paid enough attention and you just, this is the thing, you just have to take people out for lunch. Take 10 people out for lunch and just, I say, you know, don't, don't sit there with a pen and paper, but just actually be a human being and come say, and say like, you know, if we were going to talk about financial planning, what would you want to talk about? Do you know what that means? Do you know what I could do? How could I help you? And then just start understanding, right? Okay, cool. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, why do you want to learn about that? And you just, you ask questions the whole time. You take them out for lunch, you pay for their lunch and you listen for 85% of it, right? And they're just talking, talking, talking. If you did that with 10 people, you'd maybe spend 300 bucks on lunches, but you would come away and you'd be like, okay, cool. There's clearly five patterns, 
There's five things that everyone is concerned about. And then you just build your um, presentation or however you want to educate it around those five things. And then as long as you make it humorous and engaging, you'll get amazing results. Because like, you know, there's a couple of questions in here about like, you know, is it that 80% don't care or is it that advisors don't pursue them or is it that they don't have the time and skills to do it? It's not really about time and skills. It's just about priority. When you're running your own business, it's so easy to get stuck working in the business rather than working on the business. It is so easy to just show up, do 10 meetings and go home and go to bed. And you're like, cool, I've done an amazing day. And you're like, you have, but you've not actually worked on improving your business. And so, you know, it's called doing the front end, right? It's you're doing all the work before you actually release the product out and it's time consuming and it takes a lot of effort, but the dividends are crazy once you actually start releasing products. Well, I'd say hats off to Phil in terms of um, spending time in that space because his buddy, he's been doing a lot of effort in that. He's up to over 100 videos, MJ. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah, but, um, by the sounds of it, that's, that was all a waste of time from what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think MJ was saying that. Um, <laughs> I guess uh, one question I have, and, and for me, the way I'm thinking about doing my videos going forward is, is do I make it more a universal, um, do I answer more a universal question or, or try and give value on something that's universal? And for me, the thing that I'm um, landing on and one of my biggest values is helping clients actually take action. And I think mm -hmm. taking action is, um, doesn't matter if you're a 65 year old, doesn't matter if you're 19, 45 year old with kids, whatever it is, all of my clients and prospective clients um, need help taking action um so should i go all in on in that kind of space when i'm doing my videos yeah so look um are, are these videos being pumped out on facebook or on an email list or uh everywhere and anyway yeah everywhere. okay yeah. i would test i would plan out your next 10 videos and i would do five where you talk about a global problem and i do five where you talk about something really specific and that, that should be a big enough sample size and just see which one works, right? And then you can just be like, okay, wow, talking about action got a lot more likes than talking about, you know, financial specifics. Maybe I should just talk about how to take action for the next six months and then see what happens. Um, mm. Again, it's, if, we're just, if we just want to bring you more prospective clients, then we just have to keep testing and seeing, okay, how many emails did I get sent or how many people reached out to me? And there has to be some sort of way for you to track your results right? Because views don't really mean anything to you because you actually want people reaching out to you. And I think if you just set up a test and be like, look, I'm just going to create an experiment for the next 10 videos. It doesn't matter what happens. I'm just trying to see what the market likes. Then I think amazing things would start happening. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's go, let's go deeper into my brain a bit more with, with another next question is my fear in moving away from talking about finance because I'm a financial planner and the world sees me as a financial planner. Am I going to be and, and especially in Australia, am I going to be this douchebag who talks about taking action um, when I really should be zoning in on, on, on what I do, financial planning? Uh, like both. I mean, are you going to be the douchebag who's taking, talking people to take action? Like, yeah, probably, but cool, right? Like the only people that are going to call you a douchebag are people who don't take action. Right? Like I, I haven't met a single business owner who sees someone else like putting up videos or going out there on Facebook or actually trying and heard anything negative ever. There's this amazing speech by Theodore Roosevelt where he talks about like, don't take criticism from people unless they're in the arena fighting with you. Right? Like, don't ignore what people say unless they're other business owners that are doing the same things you are. But should you just be talking about financial planning? Like, I don't know. I don't know your clients well enough. I don't know what they value. I don't. I just don't understand people well enough to be able to give you an answer. But if you see people time and time and time again, and you help someone take action, and they give this huge thank you, right? Like you see this huge response from them, and they're like, "Oh my God, thank you so much. I've been trying to take action on this. This is amazing." Then yes, you should absolutely be talking about how to help people take action. It just again, I don't know what people react to in this industry well enough. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I'm curious about the um, the audience here. If everyone thinks they're perfect and they've got nothing to put on the line here that they're having a challenge with, um, just pop in perfect and you can hop out of the webinar. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I challenge a couple of guys out there that, 
yeah, share what you're struggling with. It's um, this is an inclusive discussion, and uh, as much as I love like seeing Phil just uh, like um, sort of sweat under the pressure, it's um, <laughs> it'd be good to see um, some other angles because Phil Phil looks at how he runs his advice business one way. I look at how I run my business one one way, and um, we sort of have have different angles. But I'm sure you guys are taking different perspectives from this. So. Please, yeah, I'm, I'm going to jump in, Patty. I'm not sweating under the pressure, mate. I'm, I'm, I'm an open <laughs> book. Everyone, everyone can know any of my secrets. I don't. I doesn't bother me if I tell everyone my my biggest worries about what I'm doing. Um, but MJ, I just kind of want to go back to adding value in the individual client meeting. Do you have yeah. any um, like uh, tactical ways that you that you think about that and and what? we as advisors should be looking at doing that. Let's move away from the broad marketing yeah. piece and the one-on-one -on -one meetings. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So let's, um, let's start from, so like you're in your office and then you get the email saying that they're here and then you walk out and you like shake their hand and then bring them to the office. Is that generally how this would work? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So like from the get go, like, are you wearing good clothes? Are you clean shaven? Do you look energized? Do you look happy, right? Are you energetic? Are you leading the conversation? Like all of these things matter. If I come and see you at a financial planner and you're not excited to be a financial planner, then already I'm going to be subconsciously being like, you know, what's going on here? I'm going to start getting confused. So that's the first thing, like, right? Actually make sure you present really well. Make sure you've practiced your uh, handshake. Make sure you can practice how to hold eye contact. Make sure you practice when you smile, you don't look like a serial killer. And I really mean that, right? So then you say hello. And then the thing you need to do from straight away is you need to be in the lead. You need to be leading the conversation. You need to be having a massive smile on your face. And you'll notice that around some people, you need to ask all the questions. Around other people, they'll start asking questions. And you just change, you know, I don't like using this word because it makes people think of mumbo jumbo, but you change your energy depending on the person you're with. And so you're smiling, you're leading, and you're just trying to make them feel, you know, the way I think about it is you're just trying to make them feel safe. You know, I don't know what pain points people come and see financial planners about, but some people might be really nervous. Some people may have had a really bad day. Some people are freaking out because you're going to ask them a question and they're not going to know the answer. Some people are nervous just because they're meeting a new person. And if you think about that as they're standing there, you'll want to actually make them feel centered and connected. Now they're sitting down in front of you. You need to learn to ask really high quality questions and to just listen. So for me, it's just often, um, I just start with a question of how's life, right? As open-ended as possible. And I just want to get them talking. You know, how's things going? How's life, right? Or, um, you know, what's, what's news? How are things, right? As open-ended questions as possible and just get them talking. Get them talking about their finances or, you know, in my experience, it's life. Get them moving, 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 moving. And then um, once, once they're talking, I then ask the question always of how can I help or how can I be of service or what can I do for you? And when you say that to people, they will literally give you the metric of success, right? They will literally, if, you, if you've made them feel safe and they're confident and they're talking, they will literally tell you exactly what they want, right? And if someone just says to you, oh, I just want to have better finances, just be like, okay, cool. What does that mean? Right. And that asking that question is actually something I learned from Tony Robbins. And it's an incredible question to ask a clients. What does that mean? Because when someone says, I want to control my finances, you may think something completely different to what they think. Right. To give you an extreme example of this, I once worked with someone who kept complaining that their partner wasn't validating them. And I asked them, what does validating mean? And they gave me 16, literally 16 things that the partner had to be doing for them to feel validated. Right. And think about it, right? The partner's screwed. No matter what they do, they are never going to be able to validate their partner because that was their list of rules. And so every time your, you know, every time your client says, you know, I want to be saving more money or I want to be whatever it is, you need to get specific and you need to get the list of behaviors. All right. So what would success look like to you? That's an amazing question to ask. And then the, the final question I'd suggest is, and I would ask this to every client you ever see in the first meeting, Let's say in six months time, we've been working together and I've knocked it out of the park and you're a raving fan and you're referring me to everyone in your life. What exactly have I done for you? Right. And then cool. As long as you do those things, right. 
that's exactly what should happen. So I guess, I guess what I'm trying to, to try and put this in a more succinct way, I'm trying to pull out the client's blueprint, both of what they think financial planning is and what their problems are and pull out their blueprint of exactly how I can help them. And then I just execute on that and it generally goes well. Now, sometimes you'll meet clients who have no idea what they're talking about or what they think they need is not even remotely what they need. And those people, you just very, very gently start suggesting that you could start doing other things as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I love I love this question from Anne because, like, I I constantly bounce like off this that like I love broadening the discussion. Like, I love broadening it, and then I think sometimes you end up in places where oh shit, um, they need something that I don't do. It's um, and like you identify issues that um, I guess. Um, out of your scope, which makes it challenging. And it's, I guess for finan- financial advisors, it's sort of sometimes, yeah, when you do delve into um, things like this, you, you can come up with there's more urgent things than, than them seeing us, so to speak. Um, I guess that's, that's probably one of the challenges of going, going there and losing clients because you distract from the, the financial piece, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so, um, could you give me like an example of what you mean? Like, like, what does that mean? Like you come in and it sounds like they need to go see a marriage counselor or something before they get their finances in order or? Um, that, that can be, uh, that's definitely an issue. I, I, I might let Anne jump in there with um, a, a good example. One, one I've seen is where it comes down to um, their career and that it's sort of, um, I guess, it unpacks more of a, um, a challenge around what they're doing with their career and that they're not happy and they're not making money because they're not happy and they're not moving and there's all these these psychological things coming into play. That's where I've seen it go a lot of the time because people have wanted more, but unless they change what they're doing in their career and I guess us and then me trying to go into a career um, coaching mode <laughs> um, at a, as a bit more of an ad hoc um, style, is, it, is, that, is that really effective? And um, is that sort of breaching um, where we should be keeping within our, um, I guess, our field? Yeah, like, I'm not sure whether or not I'm the person to be answering this question for you. I think this is probably an individual thing for every person. Yeah, like, you know, and you've seen relationships on the verge of breakdown. If I was you, I'd say, look, I am more than happy to help you with a financial plan, but this is not what you need right now. And I would just tell them exactly how you see the situation and leave it at that like i think you know being a human first and being a business person second if you know that someone wants financial planning from you and that's not what they need then i would just refer them elsewhere right and if they really insist and i would do it but i think you know don't underestimate the power of just listening to people and connecting with them just listening to people and actually being a positive influence can really help a lot of people so if you've seen relationships on the verge of breakdown and then i would exact i would 100 percent draw the line there Right. Like this is, you know, I am here for you and I want to help you as a financial planner. And as a human being, I care that you're going through so much suffering, but I can't help you with this. And I really think, you know, this relationship is what needs to come first. Um, You know, how can I help you with that? Or can I send you to someone or whatever it is? Like, just be comfortable knowing where those lines are. And then when they do, they get crossed just very lovingly um, and very carefully. Just, you know, tell them that it's outside your pay grade. Yeah, I mean, oh, some financial planners get paid a lot. Um, MJ, that might not be the right. Uh, right, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. for me, just just with regards to Anne's question, she she just asked, um, should we be more comfortable straying into people's non financial issues? For me, I try not to answer any questions on on this, but for me, that that's just a and um, what what do you actually care about for the client? Do you care about them, or do you care about them paying you money? Um, and if it's about them paying you money, then sh- that's fine. That's, that's your business. Go for it. But if you care about them and you're wanting to help them and your means to help them is uh, the way you do that is through their finances, because finance is such a massive part of people's lives. Um, f- finances pretty much rules everything. Everyone makes this decision around money every single day. So that is a means to help people, but just truly helping people um, and talking to people is really important. And, and my opinion is we a hundred percent, even though we're not qualified psychologists, we don't, we don't give any, you know, mental health recommendations when a hundred percent play in that space of counselor, um, coach. Um, yes, we deal with money, but that's really the space that we should be in. Um, Again, try not to answer any questions, but would you kind of agree with that, MJ? 
Yeah. Yeah. And I think, um, I just, I think this is such a personal question for each and every person on this phone call, right? What are you comfortable talking about? Where's the line for you? And when you find it and you find what you're comfortable about, just sticking to it. I really believe that. And you know, you may decide that you only want to talk about finances and if they talk about anything else, that's not your um, prerogative. If that's true, awesome. Okay. But you may want to think, you know, I'm really here to serve my clients and I'm just going to do what I can to help. But I think you're right. Like, you know, it, it can be very easily to become really personally invested in your clients. But at the end of the day, it's not about you. It is about them. And there's only so much you can do. If people don't want to change, they're not going to change. And I guess that's also coming down to niching as well. Like you, you are seeking out clients who only want to just hand you money stuff. They don't want you knowing about them. Um, and, and I tell all my clients, I want to be all in, in, in what's going on in your, in your life. Um, so that's, that's just something I position with my clients is this is the offering. This is how much I charge you, but this is the relationship. Um, and I've had people who have signed up for a year and then opted out because they just, they weren't willing to go have that relationship. They just said, here's my money stuff, deal with it. I don't want you to know anything else. Um, and that just didn't work for them, didn't work for me. Yeah, and I think like you've done an amazing job doing that because it's so true. I think knowing who you'll say no to is a really amazing thing to think about in your business because so many people think that there's a scarcity of clients out there, right? They think that there's this limited pool of clients that everyone's competing for, but you know, 20% of the Australian population is what? 2 million, right? 4 million. The official numbers are bloody hell of a lot of people. Yeah, right. It's a lot of people, right? There's, you're going to have enough clients, but learning who you will and won't work with. And, you know, I've only fired three clients since running my business, but I now know from a long way away if a person's not going to listen to me and that's fine. Like I'm happy for people to disagree with me and push back. I like that. But if you're, ignoring what I'm saying and you're doubting whether or not I have the right capability to be giving you advice, it's fine. It's just not for me. And so the only times where I haven't fired someone when I've thought about firing them, it's only ever ended badly. And I think what you've done is an amazing job. Like it's so important to know who you want to work with. It's also super important to know who you don't want to work with. Like one of my metrics is that I will only take a client if I would happily go for coffee with them. Right. If I would happily go for coffee and sit down and have a good time with someone, then they, I'll offer to become you know, their coach. If not, I actually don't want to coach them. And that's fine. It's just, it's not for me. So yeah, I think that's a really good idea. And I think, it, it, again, it's a personal question. I don't think any of us are sitting here and saying how all in you need to be in these clients' lives. It's up to you. Once you decide, you have to then draw that line. Mm. MJ, I, I wanted to bring it back to some of the stuff you talked about in the AFA um, presentation. I think... Like from a practical sense, a lot of advisors have marketing material, they've got a website and things like that. I, I can't remember what those points were off the top of my head, but they were, they were some, there's a few things that you'd suggested people looking at when they are, because um, a lot of advisors, when they um, go into a client meeting, there might be a PowerPoint or there might be um, marketing material that are used or things that are sent out prior to the meeting. What would you suggest people looking at and going over and, and checking for? Um, when they to review that that documentation to check its worth. Yeah. So the um, the what I use um, is the, the question I ask myself if I was skeptical about this profession, and I was or I was skeptical just as a human being, and I was going through your, my marketing channels, what would I be thinking about? And I think you know, as business owners, we love our business so much, and we're such positive people that we like. We go through our marketing channels and then we're like, people are going to love this. But if you take the skeptical approach and you think, okay, you know, let's say I think financial planning is a lot of crap. I think they're all a bunch of um, charlatans and I don't think anyone can give you any value. If that was your mindset as you were going through your marketing channels, what would you be thinking about? What would you like and not like? And honestly, I, if you just forgot everything else that I talked about on this webinar and we all spoke about and just did that, I think amazing things would start happening in your business. The other four things um, from that AFA talk is to designate, assimilate, appreciate, and educate. And that's just to be clear on who you want to talk to, be clear on that you're talking to them in their language, not in your language, right? Use the same words, describe their problems, how they describe their problems, not about you. Appreciate, so like actually say thank you to your clients and thank you, thank them for um, their business and really 
Let them know that they're appreciated as people, not just as money or a check. And then the last thing is educate. Like always be talking about how you can help people solve their problems rather than just talking about yourself. Yeah. I mean, for me, my... Uh, I'm going to I'm going to give you my three takeaways from our chat. It's been really good. I know this has been a personal session just for me for half of it, which has been great. Um, but my three takeaways has been uh, give value what your clients want and not what you think is valuable. Um, number two, which is um, a good reminder in meetings, just always ask clients, uh, what does that mean to you? Uh, and for me, the third thing, even though we haven't really gone deep into this. Um, but it's about niching. Um, you can't really truly give value to people unless you know what they what they value. And you know, everyone is different, and there are segments of people. So the more highly niched you get, the more you can understand what value they want. Um, so that that's been my three takeaways. Is there anything else you want to add on that big um, MJ before we kind of finish up because we've got to wrap up in four minutes? Yeah, the, the other thing that I would say is for people out there who are struggling to think about how to niche, like your, your five or six clients that you are the closest with, take them all out for lunch, pay for their lunch, and just ask them questions. What was it about what I did that made you join me as a financial planner? What was it that I did that made you think that I was the right person for your website? Um, how would you describe these problems in your own language? And, and write all these things down. Because if you take five people out for lunch and four of them say the same thing about something that you did, then you know what people are looking for. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's good advice. I'm literally just thinking about my five clients who I'm going to take out to lunch over the next month. So good. <laughs> Got to give a call to this afternoon. Anyone who's watching... All five out for lunch to lunch. Sorry, Patty? You're going to take all five, all five of your clients out for lunch. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Thanks, mate. Appreciate the, uh, um, the, the boost. The, um, all right, let's finish up. I'm sick of Patty having a go at me. So thanks, uh, MJ. Just quickly before we wrap up, uh, for anyone who's watching, how do we get in touch with you? Uh, my website, mjfitzpatrick.com. I actually give 99% of what I produce away for free, uh, literally free, like I, I don't even try and sell you. Um, all you have to do is just go on my website and actually send me an email. Um, and I can give you access. There's maybe 10, 15 hours of content, speeches, um, there's podcasts, a bunch of my blogs. So I really like working with people who take action. And all you have to do to prove to me that you do that is just click the button on my website and send me an email. And if you do that, you get lifetime access to literally 99% of what I do. So it's been awesome. Thank you so much uh, for having me on board. And I'd love to keep the conversation with anyone um, who's on here going. Fantastic. And if we've got any more questions, we'll take it on to the Facebook group. I think, MJ, you're in the Facebook group. Not sure, but if I'll be not, in it. You're going to jump in uh, and we'll put a link to your website in the Facebook group as well. So anyone who's watching who's not in there, make sure you jump in. So just before we wrap up, just want to say a big thanks to AIA um, for supporting XY Life and making this happen. Uh, and also just a reminder, if you're in Brisbane or you think you're going to be in Brisbane or you're anywhere near Brizzy on the, what date is it, Paddy? Uh, 20th of July. 20th of July. Make sure you click on uh, the link that we just put in and book your ticket. It's going to be a great night for our XY social. So thanks again, Paddy, and thanks again, MJ, for um, having a chat. Thank you. Awesome. Have a good week, guys. Bye. Thanks, MJ. Bye.